Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. Today we've got Varsity Baseball for you on the Panthers Broadcasting Network, our first edition of baseball this year, as the 7-3 and three Panthers will host the 7-7 seven and seven Pinole Valley Spartans. So glad you could join us today. Tyler Peterson alongside Kyle Shank, our baseball analyst, and Angela Willis, who is running camera today. Hey, guys. It's nice to be with you. Thank you, Kyle. Starting laps for today, as you see on your screen, will be Malik Eni in center, Nico Odako, batting second at shortstop. Devin Mahoney, who's pitching today, will be on the mound, batting third. Kevin Plummer will be playing right field, batting fourth. Peter Scheiman, the DH for Arlo Rudy, will be batting fifth. Max Goldstein batting sixth and left. Steven Giantini behind the plate at catcher. Josh Cohen at second, batting eighth. And Sean O'Farrell at first, batting ninth. We're just about set. They're bringing you this game live from Brady Park. And Kyle, you've been you've been watching this team all year. How has uh, how, how's Devin looked so far? Devin has actually looked very strong. Last year, his uh, arm was injured, actually, for most of the season, and he didn't have the velocity that he liked. But this year, he's fully recovered, and it really shows. He's uh, had some really dominant performances this, this year, and he's definitely been the firm second starter in the Panthers rotation behind Oregon State commit Kevin Flemmer. Absolutely. He's had three starts this year, 22 innings pitched, a 159 ERA going 1-1 one one with 26 Ks for Devin. Very strong season. So we're about to start. As for Pinole Valley, their starting lineup will look like this. It'll be Number seven, Mann at second base, batting first. Number 11, Wallace at short, batting second. Number three, Benueles at DH, batting third. Number 24, Fulton at first, batting fourth. Number 23, Schicht at third base, batting sixth. Melendez, catcher, batting fifth. Said that one early. Lovell in center field, number four, batting seventh. Number 15, Kirsten in left field, batting eighth. And... Elisha in right field, batting ninth. And the on the mound today for Pinole Valley. Number 22, Kyle Kruger. Now, we would like to bring you some stats on them, but they didn't put any stats in max preps, Kyle, so I got nothing for you on them today. All I've heard uh, about them is that they are a pretty scrappy team. They do like to talk a lot, you know, which is uh, uncommon for baseball teams, but... They do um, some trash talk. First pitch from Devin Mahoney to get this one started is outside for a ball. So we're underway here from beautiful Brady Field. Mahoney's second pitch. It's a swing and a miss. Maybe an off-speed pitch had man out in front. Really is a beautiful day today. No clouds in the sky. Perfect day for baseball. The 1-1 pitch is also outside. We'll run it to 2-1. and one. Devin is 1-1 one and one on the season. 2-1. That one's fouled back to the screen. We will run it to 2-2, two and two, and this is our first broadcast, so we hope it's going smoothly as we learn our position out here. Mm, that one is swung pitch. on and missed. That's his curveball. That's his best pitch, I'd have to say. And he, he gets a lot of hitters to swing and miss over that one. So Devin Mahoney, not messing around. The first batter he faces, he K is swinging. Man goes down. That'll bring up Casey Wallace. First pitch, called a strike. A little bit low, though. Yeah. That one's taken. Steven Giantini behind the plate this year is senior Peter Scheinman actually uh, had an injury to his right rotator cuff, so that's kept him from his backstop duties. One pitch from Devin, and that one is hit right back to Devin on the mound. Two outs. Looks like he jammed him a little bit there. Not as much power on that line drive. Good play by Devin.
Two outs now. Here comes Banuelas, number three, up to the plate. And that one is hit out to right field. Flemmer getting underneath it. He makes the catch, and the inning is over. So, we've played one here from Birdie Field. Three up, three down. Panthers coming up in the bottom of the first. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are live and ready. Bottom of the first, nothing, nothing, as Devin goes one, two, three in the top of the first against the first three batters. Malik Eddy will lead it off for the Panthers today. He'll be playing center field. He's batting 296 and uh, has seven RBIs on the year. It's a good production from the senior who made the uh, move to outfield from our infielder. First pitch from... Paul Kruger to Malik. That one's just a bit outside. One Malik, and out. Malik is a very fast player, too, so if he gets on base, you got to watch out for the steals. He has, leads the team in steals with five this year. Kruger taking his time on the mound. Now winds and delivers. And that one is called a strike on the outside corner. One and one to the Panther leadoff hitter, and we will be doing... More games. This is our only our first installment of Panther Baseball. 1-1 one, one pitch. And that one is hit right at the second baseman. Oh. So Malik hit it well, but it's an atom ball right there, right at the second baseman. Just unlucky there. He made really good contact. Exactly what you want to do as a leadoff hitter is hit those line drives, but unfortunate right at the second baseman. So that'll bring up Nico Aldaco, who... In their previous game, hit two home, in two home runs against San Leandro. First one's a strike. Yeah, for a little guy, he really does have a lot of power. He hit a lot of home runs last year, too, as only a freshman. So he has a bright future in front of him, for sure. The 0-1 pitch to Nico. And that one, maybe the slider went outside a bit. 1-1. One-one pitch to Nico. And that one's right there. Not sure that's a fastball. Looks like it had a little movement on it. Good pitch, though. Froze Nico. It's one and two to the Panther shortstop. Kruger gets his sign. Now winds and fires. And that was a curveball left up and fouled it straight back. Got a pretty good angle from our broadcast booth on the center field stands. The one-two pitch. Another curveball. This one hit out to right field. Back and winding is the right fielder, and he Ooh. makes the catch. Looks to have a little bit of trouble. It is a windy day. Uh, there's swirling winds around here at Brady Park, but right fielder did his job and uh, got the ball. Yeah, Leisher had a little trouble out there in right, but did eventually find it. 
So Kruger's not fooling any of these hitters. Some two well-hit balls, and here comes the Panthers' best hitter in Devin Mahoney. This is their slugger. Certainly a lot of power on him. Leads the team with three home runs. First pitch to Mahoney. And that's taken right at the knees for a strike. But along with that power, he has incredible ability. Does not strike out that much and uh, is batting 528, which is very unusual for a power hitter. That one's grounded to shortstop. It'll be a tough play for the shortstop. Guns it across, and they will not get Devin. Good hustle down the line. Always like to see that. So the, per, uh, the first Panthers base runner, I'm giving him a single. As uh, it was in the hole, it would have been a tough play for the shortstop, Wallace. He did pretty well on it, but the Panthers are going to have their first base runner of the game. That will bring up Kevin Flemmer, the other senior captain. He's batting 394 on the year, four RBIs. Kruger from the stretch kind of sidesarm that one in, and that one floats down for ball one. So Devin on first. Two outs here. Devin ahead, 1-0. and Kruger will throw another one. It almost bounces in the dirt. 2-0 and to a very good hitter in Kevin Flemmer. This is the Oregon State Pac-12 commit. He is the ace of this staff, too. Batting cleanup as well. Here's the pitch to Flemmer. That's outside. Devin goes to throw down, and he is out at second. It was a little, a little bit ambitious there. Sorry, Tyler. A little bit ambitious to steal on 2-0 count, but it's all right. That'll do it for the Panthers in this second, uh, first inning. So one in the books. We've got ourselves a nothing, nothing score. So we'll be back with you right after a short break. Top of the second, no score. Live from St. Mary's College High School, Brady Park, Tyler Peterson, Kyle Shank, and Angela Willis, our technical director for tonight. Devin Mahoney got caught stealing to end the inning. He goes back on the mound to face the cleanup hitter for the Spartans, Fulton, and he takes a good hack on the first pitch and fouls it back. The 0-1 from Mahoney. That was a good curveball. Swung right through it. And very quickly. Good. Very good pitch by Devin there. Quickly it's 0-2. He's already got one strikeout. The 0-2 pitch is high. Yeah, he's certainly come out meaning business today, Devin. Right out of the gun, no messing around. Throwing very well. Seems like his stuff is on today. Very windy playing field. 
One and two pitch, swing and a miss. There's that curveball again. Mahoney's got the curveball working as Devin gets his second K of the game. Here's Melendez, the catcher who threw out Devin to end last inning, so might want to get a little revenge. Yes, sir. On the batter here. The first pitch is popped up into the protective net or protective chains above the backstop. This will be a foul ball. 0 and 1 count. Winds, throws, swing and a miss. Another off-speed pitch to a Pennell Valley hitter, and again, Devin's got a quick 0-2 count. This Pennell Valley team is 2-0 and in league, as are the Panthers. They lead the TCL Stone League at 2-0 and apiece. This one's high, nearly checked his swing, but no appeal down to first. Be 1-2. and two. Payoff pitch. Ooh. Ooh. Thought he had him. Maybe the curveball just stayed a little bit high. Good pitch, though. Two strikes. So a lot of hitters will chase that. 2-2 two -two pitch. Swing and a miss. A fastball outside, and Melendez decides to chase it. Third strike out for Devin. At the moment, he really seems to be overpowering the hitters. They're not getting what to do what they want. Devin's making them play his game. Here's Schicht, the third baseman for the Spartans. First pitch outside, ball one. Spartans have uh, beat SPSV and Salesian. They've got seven wins on the season, and six of those wins coming on the road as that one's ripped down the right field line. Foul. So they're definitely not intimidated going to another team's park. Certainly not. They'll give St. Mary's all they asked for in this game, certainly. Outfield in a shift towards the right center gap. Here's the pitch from Devin. That one's fouled back. One and two to Schicht. Devin with two Ks this inning. Going to try to strike out the side here. He's got a 1-2 count to the Spartans' third baseman. Wines, throws, and that curveball is popped up out towards right field. Flemmer calls it. Flemmer catches it, and that's the end of the inning. Another quick 1-2-3 inning. Devin Mahoney looks to be making easy work of this Pinot lineup so far. Hopefully not to jinx it, though. We're going to go to the bottom of the second. No score. Bottom of the second, no score. Live from St. Mary's College High School. Todd Peterson and Kyle Shank with you today. Pitch to Kevin Flemmer is swung on a miss as he kind of gets a second at bat, more or less, as he was up when Devin was caught stealing. 0-1. Junior Kruger winds and fires. That one 
slides outside. Some kind of breaking pitch, one and one. Yeah, and along with being the cleanup hitter in the lineup, Kevin Flemmer, of course, as you mentioned earlier, Tyler, is a um, recruited by Oregon State, and he's the ace of the li uh, rotation. Four and one record with a 2.15 ERA and 45 strikeouts on the season. Whew. Very good numbers. So this kid really has it all. It's very fun to watch. It's only allowed six walks, too. But he's down here, one and two. One, two pitch. That one is high. It's a curveball. Looks like it almost hit him. But it goes straight to the backstop. So 2-2 two, two now to the senior. They're playing deep against Flemmer. The center fielder who's close to us is maybe 15 feet from the wall here. 2-2, two and two, no outs. Bottom of the second. No score. Here's the pitch. That one is way outside. Looks like he held on to it a little bit too long there and it just got away from him. Lost the handle on that fastball. So the payoff pitch to Kevin Flemmer. Here he comes. That's swung on and fly ball to right field. Second baseman coming out. The right fielder now goes back. Ooh. And that ball lands, but it lands foul. You're talking about that wind, Kyle. Maybe another factor there. Yes, indeed. Uh, looked like that's the second time that the right fielder for Panola has had some problems on the, what, what appeared to be routine fly balls, but with this wind make it very difficult, of course. And I'll tell you, as a former right fielder myself playing that outfield, the sun is very unforgiving in right field. That is true. Very unforgiving sun. 3-2 once more to Flemmer. And that ball is hit to right center. Right fielder going underneath it and now huddles underneath. Catches that one. That wasn't very comfortable either from the right fielder. No, it seems to be really difficult out there right now for him. So here's Peter Scheiman, one of the seniors on this Panthers squad. Former shortstop and catcher. And now DH, due to a torn rotator cuff, or injury to rotator cuff, I should say. That one is outside. Want to know. It's unfortunate he did so well in his first season last year as catcher uh, to have this injury. Slight tear of his rotator cuff, but he's unable to, to throw with the same velocity. So he has to just play the DH position this year. Fastball kind of in the same position as the previous pitch is it's called a strike. One and one. And Peter hits another fly ball. This one to Eicher and right again. Trying to get underneath it and now catches it. So getting a lot of work out there early is the right fielder. Certainly is. So two outs. That'll bring up Max Goldstein, the junior. He's batting 321, five RBIs on the year. It's the junior pitching to the junior hitting. Here's the first pitch from Kruger, Ooh. and that hits Max on the side of the left leg. So uh, Pandas are going to get a base runner here. Take him any way you can. Didn't seem to be a fastball, so might. Might have not stung as much. Yeah, it looks like Max shrugged, shrugged that off pretty easily. Ran down first base. That'll bring up Steven Giantini, the catcher this year, who this is a story kind of close to Peters, who was a shortstop, and then an injury of the catcher became the new catcher. It was Peter, who would have caught this year an injury, so Steven is assuming the catching role. He's a junior. He's got a man on first. First pitch is way outside, and the catcher, Melendez, is able to get a glove on it. He's batting 250 with six RBIs on the year. His first game of the season against uh, Skyline was a home game. I think he had four RBIs. 
Yes, he did indeed. Tyler. Busted out early. This is actually his first year hitting, too, on varsity. Last year he was DH'd for the whole year, so getting a lot of time. He's, he's hitting every game this year. That's the case today, actually, with Arla Rudy, who is playing third base, and Peter is DHing for him, allowing both Devin and Kevin to hit. One and one to the Panthers catcher. Kruger out of the stretch. Sidearm delivery and files it right back. Steven will go to one and two. Kind of an interesting look from Kruger because you don't see many sidearmers. And it's it's more of a low three quarters than a sidearm, but it's a different look. Kruger looking at his sign. Max takes his lead from first. Now ready. One two pitch. That's swung on down the third base line. Foul. Foul. Good swing by Giantini, but a little bit too far to the left. Didn't quite make the third base back. Two outs here, no score. Panthers and Spartans going at it. The winner will be uh, first place in league. And that one's outside. Good take by Steven. Runs it to two and two. Kruger pitches. Steven lunges at this one and just is able to stay alive. So it'll go to two and two at the end as he fouls it back to the backstop. Good job by Steven. Just to waste the pitch there. Staying alive. Josh Cohen would be next. Kruger is going to step off and run Max back to the back. Not necessarily the fastest base runner on the team, but it bothers Kruger enough. That'll be good. Pitch to Steven. He waits back on this curveball. Grounded deep shortstop. Wallace across the diamond. And a nice pick from the first baseman. Fulton saves an error. And that'll be three outs. Very nice play by the Panola infielders right there. So, we've played two. One hit for the Panthers, nothing for the Spartans yet. And we will go on to the top of the third. Panthers, Spartans, nothing, nothing. Welcome back in. Top of the third inning. Pinal batting. Number... Can't quite see his number, but... It is... Number four, Lavelle, the center fielder. And he takes his first pitch strike. 
And there's another one. Second pitch, strike two from Devin Mahoney. Fastball right on the outside corner. So 0-2. Devin been getting ahead of a lot of the uh, hitters. That's a good sight to see as he has had control problems in previous games, but when he has it on, he certainly is very capable of striking out a lot of hitters and avoiding the walks. 0-2 pitch fouled off down the right field line. And the 0-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Good curveball. And picked by Steven Giantini. Very good pitch there again. That curveball has struck out, I think, now three batters from Pinole. Make that four. Make that four. And uh, we welcome back Tyler as he was scrambling around looking for the charger for our camera. This is our first game out here, so a little technical difficulties, but... That's good. It's all right. First pitch to number 15, Kirsten, is outside. So 1-0 and to the left fielder, who I must say has some very long hair. He does indeed. The 1-0 pitch, that's a curveball, and that's in there. 1-1. One one. Certainly had good control on that curveball today. Throwing it right where he wants to. 1-1 one, one pitch. That one's fouled straight back. Um, I think he... Oh, he grounded out the short side. So already one out. The 1-2 one, pitch from Devin, and that's swung on. Ground to short. Nico Aldaco all the way to Sean O'Farrell, and that's a 6-3 put out. It's the first time the infielders have been challenged today with the ground ball. Good play by Nico. He's, he's worked a lot this year to improve his fielding, and he's done so. Last year as a freshman playing on varsity, yeah, obviously a big transition, but uh, this year he's really worked hard, and he's, he's definitely become a better fielder. So two quick outs, and here's Elisha who grounds out straight to Mahoney. It'll be 1-3 underhanded. And what a job by Devin Mahoney so far. Nine up, nine down. We will go to the bottom of the third. We're scoreless. Zero, zero. Top of the fourth, Josh Cohen will lead things off against Kyle Kruger. I think I said Paul Kruger. It's actually Kyle Kruger. And the first pitch is swung through and missed. Josh Cohen batting 200 on the year with three RBIs. Open stance from Cohen. Batting from the right side. Kruger's 0-1 pitch is a off-speed pitch. That one stays high. It'll go to 1-1. and no score here as we play the, the bottom of the third on a beautiful day for baseball from Beatty Park. 1-1 one, one pitch. And that one goes in there. Which be on the outside corner. Nice frame job by the catcher there, though. 
Kyle Kruger not wasting any time on the mound. His 1-2 pitch to Josh Cohen, and that one is grounded right at home plate foul. Focused a lot on Devin Mahoney's pitching performance, but Kyle Kruger has done a nice job uh, to quietly go through this Panthers lineup. Only one hit. The other, only other base runner was a hit by pitch. He's facing the 8-9 one-hitters as Josh Cohen pops this sky high on the infield. This will not be easy with the wind, and the shortstop has to come from his position to field it on the mound. Good play. But as you can see, the, the wind is certainly making every fly ball an adventure. What would be routine plays are, are now becoming quite difficult. Here's Sean O'Farrell playing first today. First pitch to Sean looks at a breaking ball in there for strike one. Nice to see Sean get a start today. Uh, usually just used in a relief pitcher role, but today he's getting to play the field and, and bat. He's one for five this year with an RBI, so he does have a hit on the season. And he's got another one here as it's a nice frozen rope to center field. And that will be the Panthers' first base hit. Devin Mahoney's single was an infield hit, so a nice solid base hit from Sean O'Farrell. So that's textbook base hit right up the middle, just like they teach you. Couldn't be any more pretty from the Panthers' first baseman today. And now Malik Eddy will step in with a runner on first. That was a nice sounding contact there. It's BB Corbats really get the, uh, the, vo the velocity of the baseball down. but It's a great sounding ball that time as Malik Eddy will take a first pitch strike. So Sean dancing off first. Kruger checks on him now, comes set. Delivers to home plate. And that one's low. This one's a bit outside, so two and one. See if Malik can uh, get just as good contact as he did his first at bat. Hard line drive right at the second baseman. Ooh, nice big swing by Malik, but he swings right through the pitch. Aggressive. Like he, yeah, it looked like he was swinging for the fences there. We go about, I would say, 310 down the left field line for Malik, and maybe let's call it 320 down the right field line. Death Valley out in right center field, though, is Sean. We'll get back on a pickoff attempt. Somewhat like the orientation at uh, AT&T Ballpark of the Giants, the Triples Alley here mm -hmm. at Thomas and Brady Park. 2-2 Two -two pitch to Malik, and this one's hit right to the shortstop. Sean's got to get back, and they double him off a of first. That's the end of the inning. Unlucky for Malik. That's twice now. Two line drives. Both got caught. A very well hit ball right to the shortstop, and it was hit so hard that Sean, who took his secondary lead, couldn't get back. So a good double play turned by the Spartans. We'll go to the top of the fourth. Panthers, Spartans, nothing, nothing. Back in, top of the fourth. 
windy day for baseball, but a beautiful sunny day as well. As Panthers and Spartans will go out at top of the fourth. This year, uh, Panthers baseball is in the TCAL Stone Division, which includes Pinole Valley, SPSV, El Cerrito, Albany, and Salesian. So far, as Tyler mentioned earlier, we are 2-0 and in that. Look to keep things going. First pitch to the second baseman, Mann, from Devon. And that's a bunt as they try to get something started here off Devon. And uh, nothing doing there is Garrett Mann. Just foul it back to the screen. 0 for 1 with the strikeout in the top of the first. The 0-1 pitch from Devin, and that's a big breaking curveball to the back foot of the hitter, 1-1. One one. One, one pitch to Mann. That's a ground ball to second base. Devin has to get over there quickly, and he cannot. So a well-placed C&I infield single as Josh Cohen had to run over as Sean got out of his position. And Devin cannot beat out the speedy leadoff hitter, man. So the first hit of the game. Yeah, man's speed there really put the pressure on the Panthers infielders. So man on first. Devin will begin out of the stretch for the first time in this game. Has a pretty good pickoff mood. So go to the plate. Losing it is Giantini. He's going to have no play. So a... Um, not sure if it was a wild pitch or pass ball, but it got through Giantini. And that quickly, we got a runner in scoring position for the Spartans. That pitch was called a strike. However, now this is a ground ball foul. We're going to go 0-2. So, seeing that it was called a strike, might have to give it the pass ball. Yeah, I'd have to say so. Looked like it just went underneath Gene Teeny's glove, unfortunately. He's done all right back there this year. He's only thrown out two of 13 runners, however. As Devin will step off and chase Mann back to second. Got to Sorry, Tyler. you got to remember, it is his uh, first year catching, and as many will say, it is the hardest position to play in baseball. He's catching two, two seniors who pretty much are going to be drafted this year by the MLB clubs. As Sean has a little trouble with this one, but we'll catch this on the infield. It's the first out of the inning. You have to think that Devin and Kevin will be drafted at some point in the, uh, the June draft. Certainly. I was actually talking to Devin Mahoney earlier this today, and uh, he was telling me that a scout had told him uh, he will draft him <laughs> as uh, late as it, as it sounds, the 49th round uh, out of 50 rounds, but uh, will get drafted, apparently. Uh, so that that's very exciting news for Devin to hear. That first pitch is fouled back. It's definitely something you, you dream about, obviously. Devin, especially Kevin, who already has a um, college commit. Certainly. And not a lot of signing bonus down there in this later round, so probably won't be heading off straight to uh, the MLB. Probably see him pitching every fifth day at some point, maybe. The 0 1 pitch is uh, checked swing, and home plate umpire says he goes, so 0 2 to Wallace. Wallace lined out to Mahoney to in his first at bat. Man takes his lead off a second. The 0-2 pitch is strike three called. Giantini didn't quite get the handle on it, but picks it up and tags out Wallace at the plate. So the first backwards K of the day for Devin Mahoney. Good pitch right on the inside corner. His fifth strikeout of the game. He 
Here's Banuelas. That ball is low. Steven can't find it, and Mann's going to take third. So we'll call that a wild pitch. Mann got a single and is advanced on two balls in the dirt. Certainly proved a menace on the base pass. Gone right around from first to third. So it's Fulton at bat. I mistakenly said Ben Wellis. He struck out. So two outs, runner on third. So more of a pressure situation on the defense. Here's a pitch from Devin. Runner on third, and that one hits the outside corner. Good looking pitch from Devin there. Good, nice. Get, to get the uh, pitcher's call on that one. Yeah, it seems like the M's been calling that pitch all game, so. Very consistent. Very, it has been. Here's the pitch. And that swung on and missed, and Devin has six strikeouts through four innings. Another good one there. Leaves the runner on third. We got business to do, though, as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Panthers and Spartans are locked up in a one, in a nothing nothing game. Welcome back. We're going to bomb the fourth. Nico Aldaco, Devin Mahoney, and Kevin Flemmer to bat for the Panthers in this inning as Kyle Kruger has pitched pretty well. Only allowed two hits. Panthers have got some good contact on them, but only a nice single from Sean. He's done pretty well today. First pitch to Nico. And that's swung on the middle. Good stop by Wallace. Going to throw on to first and just gets Nico, who is running well. Good play again by Wallace. So he's been in the uh, scorebook quite a bit. Another out for Wallace. And now here's Devin coming up. Devin with the infield single in the first inning. The righty Kruger pitching to the lefty Mahoney. Got to think that he's got the advantage here as they put a shift on in the infield. Going to hold him closer toward the right side as the first one drops in for a strike. Second baseman shaded towards first base, but shortstop and third base in regular position. The 0-1 pitch to Devin. And that's a good eye. That one's taken low. That was a breaking ball. He'll run to one and one. There's the pitch, and that one is outside. Kind of blooped in, but almost found its way back into the zone. Hitters count now, two and one. Bob in the fourth, no score. Two one is taken on the outside corner, so two and two. Um, definitely given the uh, the corners in this one. Certainly, but as long as he does it for both sides, no complaints. Absolutely, each umpire has his own strike zone. Here's the pitch, and that is 
Swung on foul. and missed. No? Fouled. I think, I think it was fouled. It seems though. to be fouled. No. He swung on and missed, and the ball bounced up in such a way that <laughs> the catcher couldn't get to it, and Devin takes first. So heads up base running by Devin as he will take first on the strikeout. He took off right after. Good instincts by Mahoney there. So runner on first. He was thrown out trying to steal in the first inning. Here's Kevin Flemmer as Kruger will chase him back. Flemmer, then Peter. Kevin flied out to right in his first at bat. Checks on Mahoney at first. Slides back safely. Another check on Devin. It's a nuisance over there at first. Hasn't thrown a pitch to Flemmer yet. He actually said that that's a part of the, his game that he's trying to improve on. Uh, and he has three stolen bases this year. So for a big guy, he, he has the ability to run. First pitch to Kevin is in the dirt, so it'll be 1-0 to the Panthers cleanup man. And now Melendez will come out and have a talk with Kruger. This uh, I also want to say San Jose State with the logo, but the Pinot Valley Spartan team, 7-7 seven seven this year. They beat Oak Tech, San Lorenzo, Cupertino, SPSV, Slesian, St. Joe's, and Albany. Except that Albany win did not count for league because that was part of a tournament. They have also lost to El Cerrito, but are 2-0 in league. 1-0 to Flemmer. Good swing by Kevin, but even a better pitch as he swings right through the... I'm going to call that a slider. It seems what he's been throwing today. It does look like that. Definitely knows what he's doing on the mound. One and one. Now steps off again. Devin doing a pretty good job of getting in the head of Kruger. Bottom of the fourth, no score from Brady Park. Pitch to Kevin is swung on right to Wallace. We'll go to second for one. On to first. Double play. 6-4-3. Goes the double play. And we will head to the top of the fifth. Still no score. Panthers and Spartans. Top of the fifth, no score. Devin goes back on the hill to pitch. And uh, Panthers came out of a tournament in Atwater and, and took that tournament with wins against San Leandro, Minarets, and Atwater. Only lost to Merced. Kyle, how did they look? Um, they, I've been talking to a lot of the players this uh, this Monday, and uh, they said that they, they played very well, actually. Uh, the best they've played all season. And that they, they were swinging the bats well, as you can see by some of the score lines. Uh, they won the final by a score of 12-4, to 4, I believe, um, against Atwater. Uh, good to congratulate the uh, Panthers on that success, uh, bringing home a, quite a big trophy. I saw it. It's almost as big as some of the players. <laughs> the 2-0 in league came with wins against Albany and El Cerrito, so... With the... Fa uh, with Pinole Valley facing Albany and El Cerrito, losing to El Cerrito. Panthers beating El Cerrito. Panthers should have the upper hand in this matchup, but not so far. First pitch from Devin to Melendez, the catcher. It's in their first strike. Right, 
Not wasting any time. The second one is a curveball. Also finds the zone. He's had that control with that curve today. It's been a good one. Oh, that was another beautiful pitch. Broke all the way across the plate. 0-2 pitch is fouled into the facade. Little overhanging piece of uh, chain link fence protecting the uh, the neighbors. As we have here at Brady Park, the big fence in left field. This one's topped on to third. Arlo takes this one and a strong throw to first to Sean O'Farrell. And that'll get the job done. One out here. Good strong throw from Arlo all the way from third base. So that play will go 5-3. And that'll bring up the third baseman, Schicht, who flew out to right in his first at bat. That curveball stays high. And go 1-0 and now. Devin working quickly. Out of the windup, this one is grounded toward the Spartan dugout. So it'll be one and one on the foul ball. Going to change the ball in for a nice one. Umpire says it's all right, so we'll stick with it. Devin gets on the round and plays with the rubber there. Now looks into Steven for his sign. Gets it, sees what he likes. Here's the windup, pitch, and slow. Good velocity on that fastball, though, from Devin. Like to see that. On a gun. This one's hit out to right field. Pretty good hit from Melendez, but it's right at Kevin Flemmer. Yeah, I think that's the one thing we'll need is a... Let's get a radar gun, Kyle. Get all the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, certainly. Accessories for Brady Park. We got two nice scoreboards, and maybe we could do a broadcast booth at some point in these stands. Would be nice, but it is a beautiful field nonetheless. We've got a beautiful day too, so can't really ask for much more. First pitch is a strike. Second pitch is low. I do would like to give a little credit to the umpires because they've, especially the umpire behind the plate, called a nice game. Sometimes you get an umpire who's very inconsistent and uh, can really intertwine themselves in the outcome of the game, which is never good. Swing and a miss on this 1-1 pitch. It'll go to 1-2. and two. Very late on that one, the Pinal hitter. Tried to pull that outside pitch there. Devin to the plate. Outside. Two and two. Six Ks for Devin. And this one's bounced towards Sean. He'll take it himself. That's the end of the inning. So, only three hits combined for the Panthers and the Spartans. will go to the bottom of the fifth. Nothing, nothing.
Just about ready to go. Kruger takes his last warm-up pitches, and we're all set. Bottom of the fifth. Scheinman, Goldstein, Giantini. And Peter will step in. Thank you for joining us once again. Live from Brady Park. Let's start watching this on demand later. Ty Peterson, Kyle Shank, Angela Willis. First pitch to Peter. It's there at the knees for strike one. Peter's batting 273 on the year with just the one RBI, but a very solid contact hitter for the Panthers. That curveball looked like a good one from our angle, and it dropped low. Had some good movement on it. One and one. Bottom of the fifth, still no score. Good pitching duel between both teams. Peter had one to hit there and fouls it into the facade. Kruger gets his sign on the mound from the windup. Goes into his motion, throws, and it's low. Two and two to Peter. Two and two to Peter. The pitch from Kruger. That one is low. Three and two. So working the count here is Peter. Certainly what he's in the lineup to do. I actually have a little bet with him that uh, he won't swing and miss, that he will swing and miss at a uh, pitch the whole year, but he uh, actually is winning that bet as he has not swung and, swung and miss at a pitch the whole year. And he takes ball four. Wonderful walked work by Peter. And the dreaded leadoff walk from Kruger. Always so, seems to come back to haunt you, doesn't it, Tyler? We'll see what happens here. It'll be Max Goldstein now. And we're going to get a meeting on the mound as the coach for Pinnell Valley will talk things over with Kruger. He's pitched all right to this point. It's only allowed two hits. He's had a hit batter. Got a one walk, and he's got two double plays, so... Quality start in my book. Agreed. Four plus innings for him so far. He's kept this dangerous Panthers lineup at bay so far. So for talking things over, looks like Kruger is going to stay out there. He does. Pretty lengthy meeting at the mound. Spanders with the leadoff base run, and Peter works the leadoff walk, and now Max will come up. Kruger staring right into his catcher. Now comes to the set position. Fires the sidearm, and that ball is outside. Looked like the fastball that time. Want to know? One on from Kruger is low, so two and zero. Oh. Good count for Max here with the runner on first. Coach Nelson at third base giving the signs over to Peter on first. Takes his lead now. Kruger looks over and out comes set. The two zero to Max is way outside. That's three and zero. Oh. So Kruger is in danger here of walking the first two hitters of this inning. There is a man in the bullpen for PV, and he looks to be ready. May just be getting a little bit tired, Kruger. Uh, last couple of batters losing a little bit of his control. That one's in there, though. Three and one to Max. Max taking all the way there. Now an interesting count because three and one, you don't, you don't necessarily want to swing at borderline pitches, but you want to be aggressive on the count. There's a ball hit high and deep to left and is foul. Just Some, ahead of that one. Great it, contact on it, though. It wouldn't have been a home run, but whew, power swing by Max. That uh, it's going to bounce into the uh, or cl close to the weight room. Definitely what the kind of swing you want on three one. 
Exactly. That's just what you were talking about, Tyler. <laughs> and it'll be 3-2 now to Max. Kruger's payoff pitch, but now we'll get time here. Two straight, 3-2 counts. Good job by the Panthers to, to work Kruger deep into the counts. Peter takes his lead off first. Kruger still staring. They check him over. Now comes set. Pitch to Max. That swung on and hit into left field. That's going to be a base hit. Peter rounding second. Going to third. He will be safe at third. Max with the single. And there are runners on first and third with nobody out. Peter running on the 3-2 count. So he made it into third base pretty easily there. Uh, nice little base hit from Max. Kruger not fooling Max whatsoever. As he didn't didn't get a good look at him the first time as he got hit by the pitch. And now first and third with nobody out. Steven Giantini will be coming up. He grounded out to short his first time. Looking at, sorry, Tyler. Looking to add to his six RBIs on the year. First pitch. Takes a strike in inside corner, 0-1-1. They'll play the corners in at the bags. They'll send back the second baseman and shortstop. So it's like they'll concede the runner for a double play. 0-1 to Steven. He gets a high fly ball to left field. This will get the run in maybe. Here's the catch by the left fielder. Peter tags. He's going home. The throw to home plate is on the money. And Peter is out. Oh, out by quite a ways. Very strong throw from left field there. Number 15, Jeffrey Kirsten of Pinole. I thought for sure that Peter would score, but a great arm just got showed off in left field. Is I want to say Kirsten was close to that 30-yard marker, and he just fired a strike to home plate. Right over the cutoff, man. Two down. Kirsten only a sophomore, too. That arm's only going to get stronger. So it'll be Max on second, who smartly tagged from first. Steven thought he had a sacrifice fly, but instead it'll be a fly-out double play. Max on second. Here's Josh. First pitch to him is low. Wonderful throw from the left fielder. Kruger's now managed to get three double plays in about all three different ways you can. Fly out, double play, line out, and a ground out. Max takes an aggressive lead. This is hit at the middle. Wallace is there, and he will throw out Josh. It's a good... Uh, comeback on the uh, side of the Spartans is St. Mary's had first and third with no out, but instead they will not score. One hit for the Panthers. We will go to the top of the sixth. Still stuck in nothing, nothing. We are in the top of the six. Still no score between the Panthers and Spartans. Three seniors with you today is Tyler Peterson 
and Kyle Shanker bringing you this game live. Angela Willis, our technical director and camera girl. Many thanks. Deb Mahoney back on the bump. She will look to get another one, two, three inning. Is the first pitch to Kirsten, who had a great throw to Gun Peter at the plate. Takes a strike. Devin's 0-1 is swung on and missed. So very quickly, 0-2 to the eighth hitter for the Spartans. He went 6-3 his first at bat. And he swings and misses on a fastball outside. Seventh strikeout for Devin. Three-pitch strikeout at that, Tyler. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good night. <laughs> Grab some pie. And eat. First pitch is low. This is Elisha, the right fielder. Devin in the windup. Turns, now fires. This one's tapped at the plate. Foul. Sun's starting to set over the hills as it's really moved out of the way of the right fielder's eyes. We've got time here. The 1 1. It's a curveball that drops in there. Strike two. That's just nasty. <laughs> That pitch probably started over the right fielder's head and just came right down on him. And now a fastball right oh, down the wow. middle. Strike three called. Eighth strikeout for Devin. Second strikeout looking, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct. Must have been expecting the curveball because he looked at the pitch right down the middle. And here's, here's Man who... It's one for two on the day. Ground ball right to Nico Aldaco. Throws on to first. Sean with the stretch. And that is a quick one, two, three inning. We will go to the bottom of the sixth. Panthers looking to score. It is nothing, nothing. We will head on to the bottom of the six as we are live now. New pitcher for the Pinal Valley Spartans. It'll be Jake Van Wello, who's the DH coming in. And Kruger finished up five innings pitched, three hits, no runs, one walk, just the one strikeout, but still a very nice outing from him. First pitch from the righty is a breaking ball that stays way high to the first baseman, Sean O'Farrell, one for one on the day with a sharp 
single into center. Now a fastball that is at the knees called strike. One and one to the ninth place hitter, Malik Eddy on deck, Nico Aldaco right behind him. Now Sean takes a curveball, it's a good one. 12 to 6 action right down the middle. So Ben Wellows was the DH, he will come in. Kruger's day is done, I believe. And now Sean, it's a fly ball to left center field. Coming over was the left fielder, Kirsten, and he catches this one. Good contact for Sean, but he won't see anything come of it. One out, and the lineup will turn over Malik Eddy, who's had uh, some tough luck today. Two lineouts. And now bunts this one at the home plate, and it'll squirt foul. Past games that I've seen, Malik has done that quite often, bunted for singles. He has great speed, so one very effective way for him to get on base is to use that bunt. Pitch from Banuelos. It's a curveball. Grounded to Wallace. Wallace will take this one. Two steps. Throws over. And we'll get the out. 6-3. So just like that. Two outs for the Panthers. And here's Nico Aldaco. First pitch to the shortstop is low. Curveball. Ooh, it looks like the umpire actually gave that one a strike. Oh. Well, <laughs> that one was a little bit low for my liking. There's another one. That's in there. And that quickly, 0-2. Has to be the first questionable call from the umpire all day. It's been pretty well behind the plate. Ben Weldo's not wasting any time. And this one's fouled back. That one is low and outside, so one and two. Nico on the day. 0 for 2, fly out to ride and ground ball to shortstop. Doesn't have all that great a batting average, but definitely has power. Here's Ben Wallace's 1 2 pitch, and that is raked up the middle. Diving stop by the second baseman man. Gets up, throws to first, and it's way wide. And he will take second base as the ball goes out of play. Wow. That was... Uh, yes, yes, yes. No, 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 no. <laughs> yes, it certainly was. Uh, I, I was up in arms when man got to that ball. Very nice stop. Then got a little bit excited, though, and threw the ball over first baseman's head, giving Nico the free pass to second base. Great stop and terrible throw. So Nico will go to second on the error. That'll be E4, and Devin Mahoney is now up. Curveball is hit right up the middle, but right to the pitcher, Ben Willows. He throws on to first. Side is retired. So, turn of events not going the Panthers' way. So, he will head on to the top of the seventh. Panthers and the Spartans still stuck at nothing, nothing.
Top of the seventh. Nothing, nothing. Devin pitching to Wallace. First pitch, low and outside, ball one. So this is high school baseball. This is basically the ninth inning. We play seven. Should it go to extras, we would. But we've got a nothing, nothing game right now. Ground ball from Wallace to Nico Aldaco. He'll pick us up. Throw over to Sean. Nice stretch there. First out of the inning, quite routine, 6-3. Now, if you're wondering who the Panthers will have up in the bottom of the seventh, it's a pretty good lineup. It'll be Kevin, Peter, and Max, the first three hitters. And now another ground ball. Nico takes his time, throws on to first. So first pitch to Benuelez, who's now the new pitcher, is a quick out. So 6-3 to Nico again, kept busy today. Devin just seems to be breezing through this Beno lineup at the moment. He needs one more. And it's Fulton, the cleanup hitter, the first baseman. It's a ground ball, a weak ground ball. Arlo, charging, throwing, got him! Oh, what a play. What a play from the sure-handed Arlo. Nice pick by Sean on the other end as well. A quick one, two, three inning. Maybe that took three minutes, Kyle. Oh, maybe less than that even. We will go to the bottom of the seventh. Panthers looking for a walk-off victory here from Thomas M. Brady Stadium. We will be right back. Bottom of the seventh now, Panthers and Spartans, Tyler Peterson, Kyle Shank, and Angela Willis with you. Bringing you this game live from Thomas M. Brady Field at St. Mary's College High School. It's bottom of the seventh, the nothing-nothing game. It's been a very good one. As uh, Devin has allowed only one base runner, an infield single in the fourth inning. Now the Panthers have a chance to win it. Banuel is on the mound for a second inning. Here's Kevin Flemmer, 0 for 2 on the day. First pitch to Kevin is a strike. And he is looking for his first home run of the year. Kevin did have six last year, so this would be a great time to open up his account. Swings and misses on that curve. I'll be a little over-anxious on that one. 0 and 2 to the Panthers cleanup hitter. Now the pitch from Ben Willis. It's a high curveball grounded out to Wallace. Throw on to first is a strong one, and Kevin will ground out 6-3. Wallace has certainly got a lot of work at shortstop there for Pinal. But he's been pretty done pretty well. He's had seven balls hit at him in this game. Here's Max Goldstein. He's or Peter Scheinman, I should say. Getting a little ahead of myself. 0 for 1 with a walk. Fly ball to right field. That one's in there for a strike. One and one to the fifth place hitter for the Panthers, the senior. Looks at a good curveball that hits the outside corner. Benuelos definitely has got that curveball going. One and two. 
Panthers just looking for a base runner right now. Ground ball right back to Ben Wellows. He will throw on to first for the second out. And we will head to extras if necessary. But right now, Max Goldstein's up. He is one for one on the day, hit by a pitch, and has a single. First pitch to Max, bounces past the plate. So it'll be 1-0 and out to the left fielder. That one's inside, 2-0. and out. What? Our pitcher. That one is high, ball four. Four pitch walks there to Max. Max has done a great job to get on base, his third time today. Now will bring up Steven Giantini. Here's Steven Giantini now. Max on first. Two outs. Ben Wellos will check on Max. Now comes set. Pitch to the plate is way outside. That one sweeps low and outside. 1-0 and oh to Giantini. Now five straight balls from the Spartans pitcher. to see Giantini come through with the hit here. Go and throw it and you know, check on Max. He's safe. Max not the speediest base runner. Only one steal on the year. Pitch to Giantini. That's a good hit ball down the right field line. Getting on it. Foul. It'll hit the side of the large net out there. One of those green pads, as you see on your screen. Good contact from Giantini. Thought maybe that had a chance to get down. Be one, one and one. Coach Nelson giving the signs at third. Now Steven will step back in. Max takes his lead off first. Ben Wellows comes set. Now throws to the plate. It's a curveball. It's high. Two and one. Pretty good hitter's counter if they want to put a play on here. Coach Nelson gives them some signs, maybe to confuse the defense here, or maybe the hit and run. We'll see. We shall see. Max goes. Steven, inside. The throw to second is late. Max swipes second. And now the Panthers are in business. A runner in scoring position. And they just need a single here. Good jump by Max. And he picks up his second steal of the year. Excellent jump. It was a straight steal. And it's 3-1 and one to Giantini. It's a ground ball. Down the third baseline. Foul. Ooh, I was jumping out of my seat there, Ty. That was just foul. The count will go to three and two. Steven almost twice ended this game. Max on second. He'll get another shot here. Three and two count. Josh Cohen would be next. Max takes his lead off second. The payoff pitch to Steven is high ball four. Two straight walks. That'll put the force on at 
any of the three bases Pinola Valley chooses. But Josh Cohen, the sophomore, will have a chance to end it. He does have three RBIs on the year. He's 0 for 2 today. Fly out to the shortstop. And then went 6-3 to the shortstop. Big chance here for the junior. First pitch. It's a curveball taken for a strike. Just caught the top of the zone. Needs to be a disciplined bat here. Bottom of the seventh. Panthers looking for a walk-off victory. Pitch to Cohen. Is high. Check swing. Did he go? No. The umpire who was at first is now behind second base. Only two umpires on the crew today. One and one to Good Josh. Good job by Josh there to lay off that high pitch. That one's hit to right field. Underneath it is the right fielder. He catches this one, and we are going to extra innings. Seven in the books. No runs for either team. Panthers threaten in the bottom of the seventh, but we will go to the top of the eighth. Panthers and Spartans. Nothing, nothing. Top of the eighth. We're into extras already. Extra baseball today for you as you've joined us on the Panthers Broadcasting Network. Brought to you by PlayOnSports.com. Kyle Shank alongside me. I'm Todd Peterson. Angela Willis in the booth. And now joined by Pedro Nevea and Dr. Khan. Devin will head out there for the eighth inning. He's still going. Only allowed one base runner as a hit in the third infield single. First pitch here to the catcher, Melendez, outside. And uh, you're going to start seeing fatigue set in on both sides as Manuelos had a hard time throwing a strike in the previous inning. We'll see how Devin does here. He's off to a 1-0 start. Now very quickly, it goes 2-0. We have breathed, breezed through this game, Tyler. The first pitch was around 4 o'clock, and uh, less than an hour and a half later, we're already in extra innings, so... Only Very fast pace. Four hits combined for both teams. Here's a pitch. Ground ball up the middle, a base hit. So the first hard single for the Spartans today. And just like that, they've got a base runner. Old commentator's curse. Yeah, you can thank me for the broadcast jinx there. My apologies to Devin. <laughs> Looks like we'll have a pinch runner. Melendez will come out. It looks like it'll be, if I can get that number, 
number. Can't quite see what the number is. We'll get it to you eventually. Devin now pitching in the stretch. He has a pretty good pickoff move if he needed to use it. There it is. He's got two versions of it. That's the more obvious one. I believe the pinch runner for Panola is number 12, Peter Munzo. So we'll go with Munzo. There's the quick one, and Munzo does get back. Yeah. And it is 12, you're right, Kyle. Um, 7, 7.30. In one game this year against yeah. Albany, uh, Devin actually picked off three base runners, so he, he does have quite a move over there to first. Still has not thrown this first pitch to Schicht. Now it goes with a sidestep. It's a pop fly. It'll bounce fair. Steven will pick it up, but there will be no play. Tough one for the catcher there. Just kind of died. And he couldn't get a handle on it to throw down to first base. So a bunt single. And the, they've got two men on now. And here's the seventh place hitter, Lavelle, the center fielder. Two men on. Pressure on the defense now. Top of the eighth. We're in the first inning of extras. It's a push bunt. And it goes into the screen. Don't see that usually, running up to bunt it like that. Seems like Pinola's found a new strategy to try and bunt to get on Devin now. But anything goes, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Devin's got the seven, eight, nine hitters, and he's got to get three outs here. Still 0 and 1. Pitch from Devin. The runner goes. This one is fouled. So it's an 0 and 2 count. See what the uh, hitter will do here. You have to believe that. It is a seventh place hitter. Do you would you bunt here with two strikes, Kyle? It's a tough decision to make. With uh, no outs, though, it may be a risk Pinola's willing to take. But I think they'll probably just let him swing away here. Owen to the count. Two men on. Nobody out. Lavelle with two strikes on him. Devin comes set. We'll spin around at second, and now Melendez will get back. Not necessarily a close play, but some sound uh, fielding there between Nico and Devin. And now time is called by the home plate umpire. So we've kind of slowed down the pace a little bit here. 0-2. Oh the pitch. It is a bunt, and it's popped up. It's foul. Well, I guess Pinot was w willing to take that risk after all. Didn't pay off there, though. The runner at second was running on the bunt, and uh, if they're going for the sacrifice, it was not very good fundamentals no, on the bunt. Looked almost like he was trying to bunt for a base hit there. It'll go as a strikeout in the books. And now here's Kirsten. Over two on the day. 6-3 and a K. See what he will do. As he steps out and asks for time. The pitch. Low. So Kirsten will be swinging away. Want to know. Was that a strike? Uh, it may have been. I, I think I may have seen the ump give that signal, but it certainly looked low. That one swung on a missed. We'll go with one and one for now. 
Made it, yeah, one and one. So he probably signaled, I'm not sure what he signaled there, maybe time to change the balls, but maybe. Maybe. One and one, nonetheless, to the left fielder, Kirsten, who had a very nice throw earlier in the game to uh, rob a sacrifice flyaway as he gunned Peter out up the baseline at home plate. Devin will come set. Will go back. Interesting pickoff move as he kind of just kept his body going towards second when he came set. Yeah, certainly. Seems like the Pinole base runners have done a good job getting Devin out of his rhythm a little bit, though. It's a ground ball to Nico. He'll go to second for one. Josh hits it way past him. It's in the right field. Flemmer will come up with the ball. But the runner will come in. So a chance for a double play there, but Josh unable to get to second base in time to cover. And Nico, his throw evaded him into the outfield, allowing the Padone runner to come home. Josh was not close to the bag when the throw came from, from Nico. So it's just a matter of, you know, you say you give an error to one of the, to Nico or Josh not catching. We'll get a pinch runner at, at second as Lau will come in and do pinch running duties. So here's Elisha. See if Devin can regain his composure. He did nothing wrong there. Got the ground ball he was looking for. I think it'll be a error on a bad throw from Nico. The first pitch is swung on and missed. So after a long game, it's one nothing Spartans in the top of the eighth. Still only one out. That's a ground ball to Arlo. He gets past him, and they'll have no play. Another error for the Panthers. Panther infield seems to be struggling a little bit right now. Just need to settle down and play maybe their game. That, maybe that fatigue starting to set in, but the bases are loaded now for second baseman Mann, who's been one for three on the day, and maybe the danger, most dangerous hitter on this team. So we will see Coach Filson come out and have a chat. Panthers are down, and it's of their own making. An error by Nico Aldaco, and now just one by Arlo Rudius. It slipped under his glove. Bases are loaded. Yeah, I have to say, still no real solid contact off of Devin. Just unfortunate uh, that his defense hasn't been able to back him up in this particular inning. He's throwing a beautiful game thus far. Two hits this inning, only three in the game. He's not getting much help from his hitters. We have to say, on the other hand, very good pitching by uh, Pinal Valley as well. If you're wondering who's up, it'll be O'Farrell, Malik, and Nico coming up. That first pitch is taken for a strike. Base is loaded, only one out. Looks like the Panthers are playing corners in. This game is about an hour and a half old. Devin takes his time now on the mound. Now we'll get time at home plate. And we've really gone away from what the main pace of this game is. We've really, they've really slowed it down. Here's the pitch, and that one is taken low. Yeah, certainly, Tyler. This has by far been the longest inning for both teams. This 
Spartans can open this game up with a single here. Here's the pitch. That one is taken. Just a little high. Just a little high. Two and one. That one is swung on, foul back. So two and two. Eight strikeouts for Devin in this ball game, but he's in a jam here. Bases loaded, one out. Spartans up one, nothing, threatening to take a three and zero league record. That one's fouled back. Stayed back well on the curveball. Mahoney could certainly use the strikeout right here. The shortstop, Wallace, who's had a pretty good game defensively, will be up next. He's over three as well in the day. Not much room for errors. Time is granted again behind the plate. Here's the pitch. Fouled back. Staying alive is the second baseman. Garrett Mann. Good at bat by him. Fighting off some tough pitches from Devin. Devin must be upwards of maybe, let's say 70 pitches by now at least. Certainly. Has to be approaching that 100 mark pretty soon. And that one hits the batter. A runner will come in. A curveball that just got away from him. A runner will come in, and it's 2 nothing Spartans. That certainly has to be the fatigue setting in because he's had control of that curveball all day, and that one got away from him. So both hitters who singled to start this inning have come in. But you'd have to imagine these these are unearned runs at this point because of the errors. First pitch to Wallace is a strike. It's not Devin's fault he's in this situation. Some uh, untimely errors on the part of the Panthers. They find themselves down 2 nothing here in the top of the eighth. And that one nearly hits the batter again. Very close there. Up high and tight on the batter. Still only the one out. Devin comes set. Now we'll pitch. Swing and a miss. 0-2 to Wallace. Lined out to Devin, then flew out to the pitcher. Flew out to Sean, that is. And then grounded out to short. 0 for 3 on the day. Could sense a little frustration on that fastball. Had a little extra to it. That one is high. 1 and 2. It's got a little w room to work. Um, balls and strikes wise, but not much anywhere else. Maybe a little reluctant to use that curveball. Don't want to bounce it. I'll let another run come in. Here's the pitch. Curveball! No! Froze the batter, maybe froze the umpire as well. That was very close pitch there. We will go to two and two. Devin comes set. The pitch is low. And that will be ball, ball four. four yeah. So I'm, I'm a ball behind. Another runner will come in. Three. Nothing. Spartans. And Coach Nelson's coming out to the mound. Wonder if this will be it for Devin. That will be it for Devin. This is already the second meeting this inning, so they will take Devin out. Well, in high school, I believe you actually get more than uh, the one visit before you have to take the pitcher out. So oh, that's right. That's right. So Devin will be left in there, actually. That's correct, Kyle. Huh? 
So that base runner is an unearned run. As Devin, I think, will only get one earned run, if, if any. There were two errors, which would have ended the inning. So I'm not exactly sure how that will end up. This one's fouled straight back. This is Banuelos, who will, I, I can only imagine will be coming in bottom of the eighth to try to close this one out. As it stands, we still got a lot of baseball left. Spartans can hold on. They will go to 3-0 and in lead. The Panthers will drop to 2-1, and 7-4 and overall. Pitch to Ben Wellis, low. Once again, if you're still with us, thank you for joining us. Tyler Peterson, Kyle Schenck, and Angela Willis have been with you today. Wish we could have brought you uh, a better one than this so far, but it's been a hard-fought game between both teams. Tide can always change. There could be some late-inning heroics, certainly, from the Panthers. Yogi Berra, it's not over till it's over. That's certainly true. Swan is low, 2-1. and one. Devin said he's got the bases loaded all around him. Here's the pitch, and that one hits the left field. Max going back. He'll make the catch. He'll set up. He'll throw home. It's cut off by Arlo. They got a man in a rundown, and he will tag him out going to third. The run will come in to score as the tag was put on after the runner across the plate. But the inning is finally over. That's a good heads-up play there by Arlo. Four uh. runs come across in the bottom of the eighth. Bottom of the eighth, Panthers are going to need four runs. It'll start off with Sean O'Farrell. Get those rally caps on, Tyler. Against Banuelos. This one is high, ball one. <laughs> Sean has a base hit in this game already. This one's fouled at the plate, one and one. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch to Sean. And that one's hit to deep center field. Back goes the center fielder. He camps under it and now makes the catch. That was a great hit by Sean. It's just the wrong part of the yard. That's the deepest part of Brady Park out there in right center and uh, lots of room for the center fielder. It's Death Valley rally to any ball that goes out there. and Sean got a pretty good wood on it, but Not today. Lineup will turn over. Here's Malik. That one bounces low. Four nothing Spartans. All four runs coming in this top of the eighth. For an extras. Malik takes the second one low. And you really just want to take some pitches here because there's you're not going to get 
a five-run homer. No, as much as uh, I'd like that to be part of the game, it's not going to happen. But Panthers do have the right part of the lineup uh, at the plate. One, two, three. Would have liked to get that leadoff base runner on, but no dice. So with one out, Panthers are really going to need to string something together to have a chance today. That one's in there. Two and one. Malik gets a ball right back to the pitcher. He will throw on the first. Two out in the bottom of the eighth. No baseball. Hurdle suck. Panthers down to their last out now. Or. There's a good 1 3. Oh. Nico Aldaka will come up. A little confusion here. Uh, Coach Nelson's coming out to talk to the umpire. I'm not sure about what, but. Let's see what uh, we've got here. I don't know. If it was uh, regarding the play before, don't think. Uh, Something about the mound. He's talking to the pitcher there. I'm not sure. Looks like Malik's. Not. Malik is Looks like the call is going to stand as it was. A ground out for Malik. I don't know what the alternate would have been. Not sure. It seemed pretty clean to me. But nonetheless, Panthers down 4 nothing. They got two outs. And now here's Nico Aldaco. That is a big Barry Zito type curveball. 0 oh, and 1. That one is just a little, a little bit low. A little bit low. Good to see that the umpire is still calling a fair game. Not that he wants to get out of here anytime soon. That one's low as well. 2 and 1. Panthers would be Nico, uh, Devin, Kevin, and Peter to all get on if they want a chance here. Those are the next four hitters. Trying to extend this game, another batter. Two and one to Nico. That is a fly ball, and that will be foul. So Panthers are down to their last strike here. Two and two, two outs, bottom of the eighth inning. The 2-2 two -two pitch from Banuelos is too high. Maybe a bit inside as well. 3-2. Nico certainly do all, doing all he can to get on base. The pitch. Ground ball into the hole, a base hit. So the Panthers, that's a start with two outs. Runner on first. That's the first base hit for Nico today. He goes one for four. Good at bat by Nico. He's patient. Found his pitch. Ground ball right through the hole. And here's Devin Mahoney. And you know, with just one swing of the bat, this game could be very interesting. Panthers are down 4 nothing with two outs. Can't forget, he does have three home runs on the year. Here's Devin against Benuelos. First pitch. Good eye, taken low. Nico takes his lead off of first. 1-0 pitch to Devin. It's grounded into the hole. A base hit. Two men on for the Panthers. Two straight singles. It's a start. Certainly a good start. 
to this two-out rally for, by the Panthers. Two straight base hits, finding the holes. This is going to be Ben Wallace's game, too. There's no one in the bullpen, so he just needs one more out. But here's Kevin Flemmer. Kevin over three on the day. First pitch. Bounces, but no advance by the runners. 1-0. and oh. Kevin 0 for 3 on the day. He's certainly due for a hit. Could come at no better time than now. Be nice to get his first home run of the season as well. It's 1 0 to the senior. Swing and a miss. Swung over a curveball. 1 and 1. Batting cleanup today, playing right field. Nico takes his lead at second, Devin same at first. Pitch to Kevin is outside, two and one. Two outs. Bottom of the eighth. Panthers down four nothing. Kevin hits this one to second. Man's there. Throws on to first. This one's over. Panthers try to make it interesting in the bottom of the eighth, but do not win this one as Pinole Valley comes in to Thomas M. Brady Park. And beat the Panthers on their own ground. 4 nothing. Yeah, I've got to say, pretty impressive performance from the Pinole pitching staff to come in here for eight innings, shut down the Panthers' offense, and keep, it, keep them at zero. Totals for the teams today. Pinole Valley has four runs on three hits and an error. Panthers, no runs on five hits and two errors to go against them. Pinole Valley moves up to 8-7 and seven on the season. They'll go 3-0 and oh in league. Panthers fall to 7-4 and four with a record of 2-1 and one in league. Well, we wish you could have uh, seen a better one tonight or today still. But our final from Thomas and Brady Field today, 4 nothing. Spartans beat Panthers. For Angela Willis and Kyle Shank, I'm Tyler Peterson. Thank you for joining us today. Stay tuned as we will broadcast another game. But today, Panthers lose 4 to nothing.